Your iPhone can no longer make it through the whole day and you have to charge it all the time. Once you replace the battery, your phone's performance will be back to normal. In this video, I'll show you how to replace your battery. This repair is easy. Plan on taking about half an hour. You'll need the following tools. A pentalobe screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a hard plastic pick, a suction cup, a steel laboratory spatula, a pair of tweezers, and a spudger. You can find these tools, the replacement part, in our battery kit. If you get stuck on one of the steps in this repair, use the guide with pictures on our website. You can also use the comment function there to ask questions. Have fun repairing your device! Before I start the repair, I'm going to turn off the device so I don't cause any short circuits. Before I can open the device, I have to remove the two pentalobe screws to the left and right of the charging port. Now I lift the display by sticking my suction cup pretty far down on the display and using my pick to push the enclosure against the table. I lift the display with the suction cup. As soon as a gap appears, I insert my pick into it and try to detach the display from the enclosure using a lifting motion. Now I can lift the display but don't forget that the display's connections are at this end. Don't stretch them too much or tear them because that would damage the display. There are five screws and a plate holding the display's contacts in place. Don't mix up the five screws because that could cause damage. I remove the screws, and then I carefully remove the plate using the tweezers. Now the contacts are exposed, and I can disconnect them one after the other, starting with the connection for the front camera, then the connection for the home button. After that, I disconnect the connection for the display, and then the one for the touchscreen. Now I remove the display. Then I remove the vibration motor. There are two screws holding it in place. I have to remove them, and then I can take the motor out of the enclosure. Now I want to disconnect the battery. There are two screws and a plate holding it in the enclosure. I have to remove the two screws first. Then I can carefully remove the plate using the tweezers and disconnect the battery contact using the spudger. There are two adhesive strips holding the battery in the enclosure. The two ends of the adhesive strips are stuck to the top of the battery. Use the steel spatula to detach them. Using the steel spatula, carefully try to detach the adhesive strips. doesn't always look that great, but it works well. Be very careful so you don't stick the steel spatula into the battery. Now I can disconnect the battery by pulling out the two adhesive strips one after the other. I have to make sure I pull the adhesive strips out flat and don't let them tear. I pull the strips gently and fairly slowly so they're less likely to tear. I also hold onto the battery so it doesn't fall out afterwards. Now that I've removed the strips, I can lift the battery out of the enclosure and remove it. So here's my new battery. It's still covered in protective film that I have to remove. It's not always that easy to unwrap it. The important thing is not damaging the battery contact or stretching it too much. 
Then we can stick the new adhesive strips to the bottom. It's very important that they're the right way around. Now I pull off the blue film so I can stick the two tabs to the battery later. Now I carefully pull off the film and position the two strips so the two black tabs stick out past the edge. Of course, I go ahead and press on the sticky part. Then I turn the battery over to uncover the two tabs. Meaning I take off the film. Now I use the tweezers to stick on the two tabs. To stick the new battery in the enclosure, I pull off the red protective film, and then I try to find the position using the battery contact. Then I carefully put the battery in the enclosure and press it in. Now I connect the battery contact again. Then I put the plate back on and fasten it with the two screws. I put the vibration motor back in the enclosure, making sure that the tab goes through the opening in the motor. Then I can use the two equally long screws to fasten the motor. Now I'm putting the display back on, so I have to connect the four contacts to the logic board first. I have to make sure I don't stretch them too much or tear them. I start with the contact for the touch screen, then I connect the contact for the display, then the one for the home button, and finally the one for the front camera. Now I can use the plate and the five screws to fasten the contacts again. Make sure you don't mix up the screws. Putting a screw that's too long into the wrong thread could damage the logic board below it. That could cause problems like a defective backlight or a blue screen. Next, I can lower the display to close the enclosure. I have to make sure I hook the top of the display onto the enclosure, and then I press down a little until the display is hooked into the enclosure. To finish the repair, I just have to fasten the two pentalobe screws to the left and right of the charging port. Dein iPhone ist jetzt repariert. Now you've repaired your iPhone, and I hope you had fun. But if you do get stuck somewhere, contact me at idoc.eu. I'd be happy to help you. Our how-to videos show tips and tricks for your iPhone. Take a look at the videos or visit us on Facebook.